let us get to the stories. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? This week, oh my god. This is definitely kind of a what the fuck is wrong with you at a corporate level. Um, oh dear. Have you ever had an idea that you thought in your own mind, in your own world, was the best fucking idea ever? Many times. And, and then Dan says no. And it turns out you were wrong. You were so... I mean, no, it has never turned out that I was wrong, but people have thought... <laughs> <it was wrong>. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're the only one Simba's bitten since he's come home. <laughs> this he loves one, mommy. Oh, this this is this is like the worst thing ever. Well, not, all right, that's exact. That's hyperbole, but this is kind of an awful thing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, this was a shit show. A such a shit show. Build a bear did a promotion last week, and here's how it worked. You were given the option to pay your age for your own handmade, self-designed teddy bear. Which usually those bears are like 50, 60 bucks. So, Especially, uh, probably way more than that once you buy the clothes and everything. So if you're, if you're six years old, you get your own Build-A-Bear for six dollars. That's a fucking deal. That's a deal. Unfortunately, they didn't it was one of those things where no one involved kind of understood, one, people are poor, and two, they will jump on any sort of deal once in a lifetime shit to have something nice. And even if they're not poor, they're greedy as fuck. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you, I've worked in super high-end snooty retail, mm -hmm. and rich people are cheap as shit. Yeah. Rich people will fucking stab you in the throat for a quarter. So what happened was... What happened was um, promotion was supposed to be for one day only, but demand so strong at U.S. locations, the company closed off lines soon after they opened on Thursday, citing safety concerns. And then all the entitled angry mommies in America lost their shit. Like, have yep. you looked at the Build-A-Bear Facebook page? <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere near You'd it. You'd think they were burning children in an oven. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you'd think they were the witch from Hansel and Gretel just shoveling children into an oven. <laughs> I, I it's just... like they were doing satanic rituals and orgies in the Build-A-Bear. Like, people are mad. You know, when, 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 my, mom, when my mom used to lose it on people, I kind of appreciate it because it was on my, it was on my behalf. But when you're on the other side of that, and all of these moms, it's it's not it's not such a good thing anymore. No, I like this is why I've never worked in like the closest I've come to like children's retail is Old Navy, and I actually hated back to school more than Christmas because moms. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Minshaw in the channel says, "Build a bear workshop temporarily became cut a bitch workshop." Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> fuck with no suburban moms, dude. I just, I, who could not foresee this shit? I, and that's what I don't understand is how did they not see what a shit show this was inevitably going to be? This is like that crusty like, burger thing. How did they thing. not anticipate this? That's like Apple being like, for today, you can get an iPhone for a dollar. Whoa, hey, we didn't think so many people were going to show up. We only had 10 per store. Really? This is like that Krusty Burger 1984 Olympic shit. Or it yeah. Eight? Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> Simpson. Does not get, Tara does not get a reference, of course. Was it a Simpsons thing? Because I wasn't allowed thing. to watch The Simpsons when I was a kid. I didn't start watching till college. They were vulgar. My, my. And mom... look how you turned out, Tara. <laughs> exactly. My mom had some rules. I had a Bart Simpson T-shirt, and it said "Don't have a cow, man." So I wasn't allowed to wear it out of the house because that was an inappropriate way to speak to people. And I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons. Because it was vulgar. 
So this here here we have the the worst thing about this promotion is now everybody knows Build a Bear's name all right. Oh yeah. It's associated with clusterfuck. And and angry mommy zombie apocalypses. And sad, sad kids. Who just wanted a teddy. Some of the people that complained, though, they were like, I brought my nine-month-old and you ruined her day. And I'm like, I promise you, your nine-month-old gives not a single chicken fried fuck that she doesn't have a Build-A-Bear. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your okay. nine-month-old cares to her diaper's dirty. It's it's pay your age. And you're yeah. nine months old. And our yeah. money is in base 10. Yeah. But years I'm are sure in base that 12. up with like 90 cents. Yeah, it's... Math! How do you convert base 10 to base 12? Math! Yeah, Fuck. like, my nine-year-old, my nine-month-old day was ruined. And I'm like, I promise it wasn't. Your nine-month-old doesn't give a fuck. Your nine-month-old was just going to drool all over that bear and vomit on it anyway. Because that's what they do for two years. Let's Let's move on to another horrible, horrible company. And this is one horrible company that somehow, for some reason, we all have to deal with. We have no, we kind of have no choice about it in the modern era. I don't know how it ended up this way, but it did. PayPal. Are you guys really arguing over what percentage of a dollar a nine-month-old baby is? Of course they are. It's our, it's Stop my that. Um, <laughs> so uh, PayPal. I this this is probably this is oh fuck guys brace this is the fucking worst thing. Yeah, look at Tara's face. Have you oh, ever... Do yeah. you understand what the word... You heard about that? Yeah. Do you understand what the term absurdity actually means? It's not wacky hijinks. Absurdity is staring into the face of bureaucracy and understanding the system is contradictory, um, harmful, ridiculous, and people will still abide it because it is our system. It's the Republican Party. PayPal told customer her death breached their their rules. <sighs> PayPal you know wrote to it. said that rule about sometimes a kid has to review a concept to see if they giggle. You need to have somebody with a soul review <laughs> a business plan and make sure that, that person doesn't go, what the fuck are you thinking? PayPal wrote to a woman who had died of cancer saying her death had breached its rules and that it might take legal action as a consequence. We have reached peak capitalism because corporations can tell you when you're not allowed to die. <clears throat> she had been first diagnosed with breast cancer about a year and a half. The disease later spread to her lung and brain. PayPal was informed of Mrs. Durrell's death three weeks ago by her husband. He provided the online payment service with copies of her death certificate, her will, and his ID as requested. He has now received a letter addressed in her name sent to his home. It was headlined, Important. You should read this notice carefully. It said that Miss Dirtle owed the company about £3,200 and went on to say, quote, You are in breach of condition 15.4C of your agreement with PayPal credit. As we have received no notice, that you are deceased. This breach is not capable of remedy. Well, no, because she's dead. It's you, you've been through this, I know. Like dealing with someone dying in this day and age is a fucking nightmare. Yup. Because you, I promise you, each one of you has like 50 accounts you don't even know about mm -hmm. that you haven't checked you you haven't checked on in years you forgot you had you know or some loan you had has been sold 14 times you have shit you don't even know about in your name and they all want not a copy of a death certificate those motherfuckers want an original they were, and getting death certificates, oh, you got to pay for those eventually. Yeah, so you need like 60 original copies of a death and, certificate, and which need, is a lot of money. You need the estate executor stuff. and yep. uh, You need proof that you are allowed to tell them yep. the person is dead. That you are the person who is officially allowed to tell them they're dead. 
It's insane. But what I'm trying to, to grasp here is why was someone's death part Against of the, the TOS. terms and conditions? Right. Yeah, you're, you're not allowed to die unless it's under their, uh, the, you know, their say so. Well, you see, she owed the money. So you're not allowed to die until you're out of debt, I guess. Which, fuck, you have a PhD. You're going to live forever, baby. Really? Yeah. Awesome. And, and if you guys don't believe me, this this is the picture of the letter right here. Yeah, there's a screenshot of the letter. Yeah, and, and it, it th now understand, this man's wife had just fucking died. And yet the some, last thing on his mind is her fucking PayPal account. And some yet someone at PayPal went, okay, we're sending this to him because that's gonna make that that's gonna be a good smart thing to do. I mean, it's probably shit like that is probably auto generated, but that's the no, because it's automating so much of our systems. Because sometimes you need a human to be like, that's not fucking reasonable. Mr. Dirtle said a member of PayPal staff had told him there were three possible explanations a bug, a bad letter template, or human error. Now, that means that. If it's a bug or a bad letter template, that means someone put into the system that these variables could be generated at all. Yeah. In this combination. Or they didn't put in that it couldn't. Yeah. And you have to be very specific with that shit. So they didn't specifically say death exempts. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, as we increasingly automate our society shit like this will happen more because there's no human person with a soul to be like no and it, there have been so many so much shit with paypal over the years here's the worst part you can't escape paypal you can't yeah it's in everything you want to sell anything on ebay you fuck yeah. it's all paypal paypal is fortunately etsy takes apple pay now because mm. i like etsy but I'm not fucking with PayPal. I haven't fucked with PayPal in years. PayPal is just a fucking demon. If, if you need... But they are like the industry standard for yeah. online payment yep. from person to person, you know? Yeah. It's hellish. Oh, let's get to our normal bullshit. Florida. Florida. This is less depressing and more just kind of disappointing. Florida man tells cops he didn't drink while driving, only at stop signs. <laughs> That's amazing. Indian County, Florida. <laughs> Earl Stevens Jr. of Vero Beach. He looks like an Earl. 69 was pulled over at McDonald's drive-thru on June 27th after a woman said a vehicle behind her kept hitting her rear bumper. Steven said he'd never had a valid driver's Florida driver's license. And deputies noticed an open bottle of liquor in the passenger seat of his car. Deputy said Steven smelled of alcohol and said he felt, quote, pretty good. I imagine. He also told deputies he was drinking Jim Beam bourbon from the bottle that arguably Ow. gave the worst or best excuse ever. Quote. He further explained he was not drinking while the car was moving and only when he stopped for stop signs and traffic signals. So fucking awesome. I mean, technically... <laughs> what's it is, is it driving while intoxicated or drinking and... Dr like... <laughs> there might be some letter of the law shit he might be getting away with here depending on how the law is written. Blew a blood alcohol... I doubt they're going to let you get away with it. Blew a blood alcohol content of 0.153. Ooh. And Steven said he had two earlier DUI charges from Missouri. Aw, he's from Missouri, baby. <laughs> That's going to be me when I'm older. That is going to be when you're older. <laughs> they're going to call me and they're going to be like, Mrs. Hawthorne, he's done it again. <laughs> What did he blow this time? Well, this time he hit a record. <laughs> and he wasn't wearing any pants. That's, that's my life in like five years. Indeed. Oh my god. I just, it, what the fuck? 
I don't. I, <laughs> I like the part where he's never had a Florida license. <laughs> But the thing is, that could mean that he has, still has his Missouri license. Uh, like, that could just mean he never transferred his license from state to state. Not necessarily that. That would be a long time. To, look, at he's 69 years old. No, I know. But, like, it sounds like, well, I never learned to drive. But he probably did. He just let his fucking license expire 10 years ago and never updated it. Which is still not good. You I just do that. I was trying to imagine the cop trying to write this up. Is like you're not going to believe this shit. Can you imagine the cop's face when he said that to him? No, I'm not drinking and driving, sir. Safety first. I only drink when I'm stopped. <laughs> Can you just imagine that you're 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 already a cop in Florida. So your life <laughs> is already pretty fucking special. <laughs> Like, you probably already had three naked people today. <laughs> and this fucking old coot brings you that shit. And you're just like, I quit. Midnight Storm <laughs> says, I didn't know you could make red light, green light a drinking game. Who knew? Uh. Oh, oh, more floor. Oh, my God. Well, this one's magic. We got video. Did ya? Oh, uh, let's let's have let's watch, shall we? Let's let's all let's all get together and and watch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, dude, it's. Why don't turn zigzag? Florida man chases neighbor with tractor screaming, "Run, fat ass, run!" That's also gonna be me. <laughs> Why are we gonna have a tractor? We live in New Jersey. Cause you don't need a tractor. Mm. It's bad enough I have an uncle that has a tractor graveyard in his backyard. Uh, a property dispute turned ugly last month. A 72-year-old Florida man chased his neighbor with a tractor and yelled, Run, fat ass! How old this guy's making the classic movie mistake, though. Like, hmm. he's making the classic Rick on Stark mistake. Just turn. Yes. You know that thing can't corner for shit. Look <laughs> at those tires. Just turn. Uh, didn't you see Prometheus? Um, Howell Morris faces a third degree felony charge for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill. The victim's wife recorded the June 19th incident and called 911. Um, St. John's County Sheriff's deputies viewed the video, which led to Morris's arrest. Court records show Morris has been ordered not to contact the victim. And uh, look at this dude. 72 years old. That is the I don't give a fuck. That, that's what this, this whole hairstyle. Yeah. That's the I don't give a fuck. That, that's how that, that works. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of what you do, used to do to your poor diabetic cat. <laughs> yes. What? Dan, Dan used to have a cat named Drake. <laughs> what? Drake was a test cat for Purina. Yeah. And people would say, oh, the poor thing. And he was like, no, because he tested kitten food. Like, that was his job, was to taste test food. T they tell him about the tattoos. Put <laughs> he had tattoos in his ears. He had his number, mm -hmm. like one, two, three. But then the other ear said cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what kind of scientists they're hiring at Purina, but. <laughs> Is this a puppy? <laughs> So Drake, oh, was, Drake was a bit rotund. There we go. And he was diabetic, and they had to put him on a diet. So tell them what you used to do to poor Drake. <laughs> we, we had one of those big towers, big cat towers. So I put the extra food on top, and I told him when his fat ass could get up there, he could have some. <laughs> and then I would also run him up and down the stairs with a laser pointer. <laughs> Drake. They, they they had another cat that was so shy you couldn't look directly at him and that cat used to hide under the couch 
and that cat died and nobody knew because he was so shy so for like a day or two nobody knew that this cat was dead because he was so shy they never saw him anyway and his food kept disappearing because they they would feed the cats like wherever they were Hmm. and it was dan that figured out that because he just wasn't moving (laughs) drake was like don't worry i'll take care of that (laughs) just nobody say anything and i get some extra food oh but i i oh this dude, man, 72 years old. This is like if your grandpa went on a homicidal rampage. Yeah. In a tractor. In a tractor. Which, okay, let, let, can we look at, let's go back to the tape, shall we? That is the slowest speed chase. It's like the steamroller chase from Austin Powers. <laughs> I mean, really? This is not what I consider... I could have solved the whole problem with a sharp left turn. (laughs) It's not exactly what I consider a credible threat. You know? No. Uh. Well, let's... They're mad at you over that cat thing. (sighs) What? Wow, Dan, you are a sadistic asshole. It wasn't the cat's only food, I should point out. Like, the cat got his his normal portion of food. It was like... The extra everybody can graze on food. I don't want to make it sound like he was starving, poor Drake. Well, let's let's move on to more senior citizens misbehaving. Jesus fucking Christ! Is that the theme this week? I don't know. Maybe Three old men. Man, <laughs> eighty-two, accused of setting fire over twenty-one dollar debt. Dispute over a $21 debt prompted an 82-year-old man to set a neighbor's window on fire, use a walking cane to knock over her flower pot and television. Vincent D'Alessandro of 74 Bear Creek Boulevard is facing arson charges, alleging he set fire to the window while the woman was inside her home. According to the complaint, officers first responded to the uh, Transitional Veteran Housing Unit uh, after resident Deborah A. Spencer reported being threatened. Spencer told police that D'Alessandro, uh, her neighbor, had been pounding and kicking on her door for hours, 82 years old, and had slid a note underneath saying, quote, slip what you un- owe me under my door or my next visit will not be so friendly. Shortly before Spencer called police, D'Alessandro used... I just used- want to point out that this guy's clearly Italian, and with that note... I I feel like he might be connected. You're going to call me racist, but I'm just saying it sounds a little soprano-y to me. Shortly before Spencer called police, Alessandro used a walking cane to poke through a window screen, knock over a flower pot that broke. He also knocked over Spencer's flat screen television. Um, Quote... Worth more than 20... Guess what? Now you owe her money. Oh, as... Quote, I am going to light your apartment on fire, the complaint quotes D'Alessandro is saying during the vandalism. Police left the scene, but we're back on Sunday when Spencer reported her window had been set on fire. Okay, never never telegraph the threat. Come on. Yeah. Basic 101. Police say they observed burn marks to Spencer's living room and he received and recovered three burned matches. Now, this is where it gets, come on. After state police fire marshal determined the fire had been deliberately set, officers arrested D'Alessandro, who they said was found in possession of a matchbook with missing matches. <laughs> D'Alessandro also admitted he warned Spencer he would, quote, slap the shit out of her, and that he used his cane to hit her window. Over $21. 82 years old. I mean, I get, like, this says it's in a veteran center. It's probably retired. Probably on a limited income. Money is tight. Every dollar counts. I get that. And that sucks when someone doesn't pay you back. The problem is, what you just did is going to cost you a shit ton more than $21. Oh, yeah. Like, you're going to have to replace all that shit, get a lawyer... You've really not improved your situation. I... 82! Like, I've been in a situation where $21 would really be the difference between a good day and a bad day. I have. How so are you... you solve a... that problem with arson. 
I would have thought by 82, you would have outgrown Bitch Better Have My Money. You know? You don't know a lot of Italians. 82! They all had whole grudges. And finally this week, everyone sent me this. We say irony is dead. We say this quite often. My God, someone needs to check its pulse. Burglar calls police after breaking into an escape room and not being able to find his way I'm out. I'm telling you about this. That's amazing. Vancouver, Washington. Generally, you're supposed to break out of an escape room, not into one. The Vancouver, Washington man tried, had to call the police for help after he broke into the Northwest Escape Experience and couldn't get out. Um, the burglar inadvertently tried his hand at the team building craze on Sunday. When he got in, he just kind of made himself at home, Bertrand said. Actually stole a beer from the refrigerator. <laughs> Police say he also had a burrito. Okay. In addition to the beer, the man allegedly stole a cell phone and a TV remote. <laughs> man, then tried to get a TV. What? What are you going to do with that without the TV? I don't know. The man then tried to get out the back door, but he damaged it so badly trying to get in, he couldn't open it. So he called 911 using the phone at the front desk. Eventually, he did manage to get out the back door, only to run into a police officer who promptly arrested him. <laughs> I like this paragraph. The man was inside the business for at least 35 minutes. That beats many people who attempt the escape rooms. <laughs> Visitors usually spend an average of 50 to 58 minutes trying to get out. The record is about 38 minutes. However, Bertrand spent says the suspect's time won't count. He did call 9-11, That's not a win. <laughs> I just, I, this guy, this fucking guy. But like, that's, that's great publicity for them. Yeah, it's, the, the our escape room is so fucking good. You're gonna need the cops to get you out. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, I'll go. <laughs> oh just what the fuck what the fuck and I love how we broke he in to steal a beer and a burrito and a TV remote who does that like that's shit you could steal from the 7-eleven which is always open and you're not going to get locked in who who the who the fuck steals a television remote Without the television. It I only goes to one TV. <laughs> there was a thing like 20 years ago, Oprah did a thing like she wanted to just test like how the word free affects our brains. So as people came into her show, she had a whole table of only left sneakers with a sign that said free to see how many people would take them when there was only left sneakers and there was no match. Like, do you know, like two thirds of the audience took those fucking sneakers? And she asked them, she was like, why? Why did you take a left sneaker? And they tried to make up stupid shit. Like one lady was like, well, I can use it to kill bugs. She's like, or you could use your shoes that you have for that. Like they just took it because it was free. So they just stole, the TV, just stole a TV remote because, well, I can take it. was there and it wasn't nailed down. Yeah, the bio freak is saying, at least go for the TV. Yes. If you're going to steal the remote. Steal the TV, too! That's what I used to boggle me at Sephora about the people that would steal the testers. I'm like, you're already stealing. Go for the gold. Take the product. I know, right? Like, you're already committing the crime. When you steal Make a tester. worth it. When you steal a tester, that's just lazy crime. That's like, it's well, it's right here. Crime. What? Like, that comes with a free side of hepatitis. You don't know who's used that. Well, the first thing we learned this week is if you're going to steal the remote, steal the TV. If you're already stealing, just go for it, man. <laughs> just, what's holding you back? Yeah. We've learned that you're never too old to be a complete dick. No. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, that, we already knew that, though. That covers three different stories this week. 
But like we already knew that Chevy Chase is a thing. <laughs> like. <laughs> Burn! Holy shit! I hate that guy. Don't you hate that guy? <laughs> I'm gonna get comments on that one. That was a that was a burn you could see from orbit. My God! How dare you? National Lampoon's was a tre- was a was a fucking masterpiece. You know what? I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Um, National Lampoon's has been on. I forget which fucking cable, like A and E or 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 whatever. Arts and Entertainment, whichever, or, or uh, AMC, American Movie Classics, whichever lie of a network it is. Yeah. And you know what? It's not that funny. It's really not that, especially the first one. It's really not. It's, They're it's, really, it's, none of them are. It's just kind of mean and stupid. Yeah. Like Chevy Chase. <laughs> and fine, we've learned that PayPal is the worst thing on earth. It, it is. Yeah. It is it is the herpes of digital services. PayPal will tell you when you're allowed to die. And finally, we've learned um, you need to think your promotion through to its logical conclusion. Otherwise, you're gonna get a lot of free publicity. All right. Yeah, but it's not gonna be the kind you hope for, though. Nope. <laughs> nope. I still want to know how you fucking make change for uh, pay your age for a goddamn nine month old. Don't get them started again. They had a whole thing. They're like, well, no, nine months is three quarters, so it's seventy five cents. No, it's nine. They had a whole thing. Don't get them started. <laughs> Fuck math. 